welcome back to the Modern Female Podcast and Happy New Year. I am your host, Z, and I hope you all were able to take time to relax and recuperate in your own way over the past few weeks. I know for me it was a much needed break from everything, but we're now back, and this week I'd like to sort of follow up on what we discussed in the last episode, which was around setting goals and preparing for the new year. Many people set New Year's resolutions and often have trouble following through with them. There can be many reasons behind this, and I thought today I'd give kind of a breakdown on how and why this can happen, and some ideas on how to overcome the issue of failure to follow through. And just a warning, some of this may come across to be a bit blunt. I first want to quickly address that I've noticed increasingly in the last few years or so that it's becoming the cool thing to reject New Year's resolutions. You hear people talk about how they just put action towards what they want and they're not going to wait around for a new year to set a goal. I want to just gently remind you that it's easy to talk, it's easy to make your life look a certain way online, and I'm not discrediting anyone who says that they do this, but that it doesn't have to be what you do. Just because it's seemingly trendy to reject New Year's resolutions doesn't mean you have to as well. There are so many factors that affect what kind of goals you have Um, and how you can reach them. And I would say that for many, myself included, a new year or even a new month or new week can be great to help you with your mindset. There's nothing wrong with that if it helps you. Not only that, but because New Year's resolutions are infamous for usually dying out by February, that also adds to this issue of kind of rejecting having a New Year's resolution, if you can call it an issue. I'm sure that if you have a problem with seeing your resolutions through, it's not because they're a New Year's resolution. I'm sure if you were to set a goal of, let's say, losing weight at the beginning of the year and you don't follow through and you lose momentum after a month or two, you're very likely going to experience a very similar thing in May or June if you're going to again try to lose weight for beach season. My point here is, while a certain point in time, like a new year, may help in initially exciting you for a goal, the lack of follow-through isn't necessarily related to the fact that it's a new year's resolution. I would say it's more a matter of patterns within yourself that can get in the way of seeing your goals through. One pattern which is undeniably human is an eventual lack of motivation. You are not going to be motivated every day, at least not by your pure desire to do something. Other factors like something that your livelihood depends on, having other people involved, or serious health issues can help keep you focused on your goal, but even then, it's human nature to feel tired and burnt out, especially with the way we live life nowadays. The truth is, it's very rare that you can go day in and out being purely focused on your goals. Other obligations are bound to come up and they will take from you, emotionally, financially, and physically. The sooner you can keep this perspective, the more patient and gracious you can be with yourself, which I think is key. Why? Because all too often, that dejected feeling of losing motivation, nothing going your way, can cause you to give up, rather than getting up and continuing forwards. Unfortunately, I can't give you an overall formula where A plus B plus C equals goals achieved. But what I have found that helps me is one, keeping perspective and having patience for myself. Two, a more positive outlook, which I know is easier said than done. And three, some introspection that might help you understand yourself and your patterns around goal achieving. Following through with your goals, like many other things, is a muscle that must be exercised. You have to instill confidence and trust in yourself that you can and will get something done, that you will get past everything that life seems like it's throwing at you. One of the best ways to do this is to give yourself goals that you know are achievable. You may have heard that the best way to increase your self-confidence is to start by keeping one promise to yourself a day. This is a great exercise to apply to habit-oriented goals, such as being more healthy or meditating regularly or even keeping in touch with loved ones. Though to be honest, I think you can virtually spin any goal into a daily promise that you can keep with one simple action. This is very helpful when you find that lack of motivation is getting to you because at least with one simple little action in your entire day you can still have that sense that you've done something for your goals. Now keeping achievable goals doesn't mean you have to sell yourself short or that you can't aim for something bigger in life 
but it's common to feel incredibly overwhelmed by a goal if it's just too big. A skill that is invaluable here is to be able to break down a goal into smaller goals. If possible, break your goal down into steps, even if you don't know what the exact details of each step are. As a loose example, if you want to start your own business, you'll first need to conduct research, understand the supply chain of your business, gather capital, begin sampling or testing, create your brand, and then launch. You break down these steps, even if you don't know all of the steps or how much money you'll need or where your leads will come from. Having this breakdown not only gives you a clear starting point for your goal, but also lets you keep in mind what else needs to be done and track where you are in terms of progress without feeling the overwhelm of having to do everything all at once. You can also break down goals in terms of time, like I'm going to do this X amount of times a week or month, and it again lets you take on the goal in smaller doses. Too much stress or pressure around your goals can also become a hindrance in achieving them, and this is one I speak from lots of experience on. Facing this issue definitely is about mind over matter. Something that has helped me regarding this is allowing flexibility around deadlines, or where possible, completely removing the deadlines altogether. I know with a New Year's resolution, you're probably going to want to achieve your goal by the end of 2021, if not before then. I need you to really evaluate the type of goal you're setting for yourself and ask yourself how realistic that is according to the tools and other obligations you have. If you're about to start to learn a new skill that is totally brand new to you, will you actually be able to give it enough time every day where you'll be an expert by the end of the year? If you're trying to achieve something that has been incredibly difficult for you to accomplish in the past, have you set yourself up with new or different tools where you can expect somewhat of a different outcome? These are all factors that can be considered while trying to establish a timeline, and even then I would recommend flexibility because you don't know what will come up while achieving your goals. This is not to say it'll never be possible, but be ready to cut yourself some slack in case it doesn't go according to plan. Because let's be real, most things in life don't. Everything happens for the best, but not necessarily according to plan. I think putting these points together really puts you in a place where you can be most productive and see most progress. My approach has become to break down my goals into steps, take them one piece at a time, and check in with myself every month to evaluate what I'm doing, all while weaving in daily little promises that I do for myself and my goals. I look at whether my actions are really getting me results, and if so, at what pace? Am I getting results I didn't expect, or in a way I didn't expect, or am I not getting results at all? If that's the case, then that's the time to maybe change up my approach. This is all while maintaining a perspective that I am human, I have a multifaceted life with so many factors, so many things that can pop up, take my time and attention, and again, just giving myself grace and patience over that fact. This means I don't hate on myself if I don't get where I want to that month. I factor in everything that happened, and I try to understand whether it was really external or internal forces that got in the way of working on my goals. This also means recognizing that even if out of a whole month I only took action for two or three days, that's still something. I strongly believe that negativity is not going to get you any closer to your goals, so you may as well be positive. Negativity eventually just convinces you that it's pointless, that you aren't capable, and that you should give up. This sort of leads to my final point. There will be things you set out to do that will not be accomplished. You can look at it as divine intervention, that maybe it wasn't meant for you at this time, or maybe you didn't genuinely want it as bad as you thought you did, which is okay, or that circumstances just weren't in your favor. I once again want to highlight that negativity is not going to take you anywhere in this. Not achieving one thing is not going to negate the other goals you did achieve. It's not going to bring down your worth. It's common to feel defeated, feel like a failure, even feel shame for not achieving what you set out to do. But I guarantee that even if you, at the end of the year, didn't even completely achieve one goal, you didn't fail because you definitely did something for that goal, even if it was just thinking about it and starting. Not to get philosophical here, but understand that there is no way but forward. You can either ruminate over something that didn't work out, or you can take away from it and apply it to the same goal in a new sense or apply it to a brand new goal. A failure can teach you as much as a success can, if not more. 
You learn about yourself, what you do and don't desire, what does and doesn't work for you, how you can and can't function at your best, etc., etc. How can all of that not be of value? It's like I said before, you may get results in a way you didn't expect or results you didn't expect at all. It's really down to you whether you want to take that and throw it away and begin another year with more goals that you're going to likely fail because you refuse to learn from past mistakes or whether you take that learning forward and will likely be able to apply it across other areas of life as well and proudly say that you are genuinely growing every year. I feel like at the end here, I just became a bit tough lovey, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. If you were to ask people who know me, they're probably fairly familiar with that tone from me. But I hope I've made you think and hope that throughout this year, as you work on whatever you want, my voice pops into your head here and there as a reminder that only you can make the most of your situation, no matter how it plays out. Okay, now enough of my preaching. I'm well aware it does sound that way. Let's move on to our Oracle card for this week. As always, I'm using the Work Your Light Oracle deck by Rebecca Campbell, and if you're interested in seeing what the card looks exactly like, you can head over to my Instagram. It will be in the tarot slash oracle highlight. Okay, so this week's card is Play, and I think this is great in the sense that I know I have kind of put a lot of methodical, very structured approaches to you about achieving your goals. And I think this is kind of the universe's way of telling us, reminding us that we need to balance things out. So the card says play, it says have fun, celebrate, don't be so serious, Um, which like I said, you have to, this is just a reminder that you need to kind of balance everything out. You can't be super, super serious all the time. Work hard, play hard. And the picture uh, is a woman sitting in a giant uh, martini glass, I think, in a giant cocktail glass, which that just kind of makes me think of, I think the mask, Cameron Diaz did a scene like that. I don't know. That just reminded me of that. But anyways, and she's sitting there. She has the sun shining down on her. She's on a beach. She's living her best life. And it looks like there's gold in the glass that she is sitting in, which is beautiful. She's based, I feel like she's reveling in the things that she has done. She has created for herself. I think she's wearing gold as well. Don't have very good lighting right now. That's on me. But I think she's, I know she's sitting in kind of this golden liquid and yeah, I think that represents kind of what she's been able to do for herself and now she's really basking in it. Plus she has the sun just shining down on her and she's able to bask in that too and just totally enjoy herself. I'm going to quickly just read from the book as usual, the little booklet that comes with the deck. So stop taking life so seriously. Your spirit needs to have some fun. The more you play, the more inspiration will follow. Take some time out to do something without being attached to the outcome. You are being called to rest and play and learn to have more fun. Do something that makes you laugh, the best medicine around. Call up a friend that you can be silly with. Take your inner child on a date. The more you switch off your mind, the more room your spirit has to whisper and guide. When we do things without being attached to the outcome, ideas, clarity, guidance, and solutions have the space to drop in. The left and right hemispheres of the brain can begin talking to each other. Make play a compulsory part of your day. Schedule it. Spend more time doing things just because you love to do them, just because they bring you joy and light you up. If you follow what lights you up, you will light up the world without even trying. For when you are lit up, you are in your spirit. And when you are in your spirit, you fall into flow with life. How do you play? What do you do to have fun? What lights you up? If you've been working hard lately, it's time to celebrate how far you have come all that you've achieved. Don't rush on to the next thing. Take a moment to throw a party, go on vacation, or have some fun. And then the action that comes with this card is have more fun, play more, and celebrate your achievements. So I know things are pretty limited right now. At the time that I'm recording this, we're still in the middle of COVID, especially in the Western countries. Um, It seems to be getting worse rather than better, but um, I guess we still have to make the best of it. We have no choice. Like I said, there's no way but forward. And 
I know for myself, I took this as kind of balancing, like working hard towards your goals and also making sure you have time to rest and play. But now that I'm thinking about this, honestly, this can also be a resolution in itself. Maybe if you are constantly working all the time or kind of just grinding, hustling, whatever it is you want to call it, maybe you need to actually have a resolution for yourself where you are going to slow down and take care of yourself and take care of yourself in a way of just allowing yourself to be carefree and to have fun. Um, If you don't have a resolution for this year already, which is around um, something that you just love, something from the heart, then I would definitely think about adding that in. I know I was going to actually include that in my um, list here about having resolutions from the heart, but I didn't feel like I had much to say about it. Um, And resolutions from the heart just meaning things that you genuinely enjoy, like your heart enjoys it, your soul enjoys it. Um, It doesn't necessarily have to have a material purpose, like it's not necessarily going to get you money or success or any of those things it just it just makes you pure like gives you pure happiness and I didn't end up including it because again like I said I didn't feel like I had much to say on it but I feel like this is kind of in an indirect way kind of hinted at that anyway so let this be a reminder to you as hard as you're going to work this year in 2021 make sure you give yourself time to rest I think 2020 gave us that lesson as well that like when the whole world was in lockdown, we all kind of had to retreat. And I think a lot of people realized how needed that retreat was. So take that lesson forward as well. Make sure you have time to enjoy yourself, to relax and celebrate. Celebrate the things you do accomplish, whether they're small or whether they're big. Everything deserves to be celebrated. My voice started to give out a little bit there. I hope that wasn't too noticeable. But as always, I hope that this week's episode has resonated with you, even if it's one little part. Whether you agree or disagree with my take on any of what I've discussed today, I'd love to hear it and have some healthy discussion. You can leave a comment on any of my socials. Everything, as always, is linked in the show notes. I hope you're having a wonderful week and a decent start to the new year, and I will see you next weekend.